Hey everyone, today you're getting your first problem set and that means you're actually going to be programming in Java starting today. Um, there's some basic information that you guys need to know that I thought would be best given to you through a screencast. So uh, do your best to follow along here and if you uh, have any questions after you watch this, let me know. Don't forget to pause and uh, you know stop and rewind if you need to. Have, uh, need to. Uh, all right, so let's get started. Um, go and you open Eclipse, uh, which I should have told you how to do by now. Uh, when you open up Eclipse, the first thing it's going to ask you to do is it's going to ask you for um, a workspace. Um, make sure that your workspace is on your Y drive. Um, I don't have a computer connected to the Y drive, so I can't use it, but you would browse for it. It would be uh, under computer, there should be a Y over here. You pick that and then um, the name of your workspace, it can be called like Java workspace or something like that. We'll discuss that in class. Anyway, after you pick your workspace, you can check mark, use this as default, I'll use again. I'm not going to do that because I might want to change my workspace later. And then click OK. And then in a minute or so, depending on how fast your computer's feeling today, uh, you will have a workspace open in Eclipse. My computer is being a little slow today uh, because I have to use my physical hard drive, but it hopefully won't take you that long. If it asks you to send usage statistics to Google, you can say yes or no. I say no, but it doesn't really make any difference. Anyway, this is what um, Eclipse is going to look like for you. Um, you've got your package explorer over here, which should be empty right now. Uh, basically, this is where your code is in this middle box. And then over on the right, you have an outline which isn't available right now. The first thing you're going to want to do is create a new project. So you go to File, New, and Java Project, right? Um, I don't know about this change color scheme to improve performance thing. Um, I think that's just me. I'll ignore it. <laughs> For the first project name, you can call it like Alan one. Note that I make the first letter capital and then each subsequent word capital, right? Um, it's really important. And all of your classes need to have uh, capitalized letters. It's kind of a, a Java standard. Um, so you should get used to that. Don't put any spaces between the words. Uh, just do a capital letter every time there's a new word mashed together. All of this other stuff should be fine by default. So you can just click finish. And then there you go. Uh, now, right now there's nothing, you've got challenge set one, but there's nothing in it. So what you do then is you go up to file, you click new, and then you click class. Everything that happens in Java is gonna happen in some class. So you need to create a new class. Um, so we're gonna create, click new class. The other way to do that would be to right click on source and then go to new and class. Then you're sure that you're going to create the class in the project that you're working on. Um, now the name of the class, I'm just going to call challenge set one, but when you have multiple classes, you can name them, uh, you know, that that's meaningful, right? So like if we're working on a guessing game program, then you're going to create a program called guessing game, right? Uh, and it would be capital G, U-E-S-S-I-N-G, and then capital G-A-M-E. Anyway, got challenge set one for the name. Um, down here where it says which method stubs would you like to create, you might as well create a main stub. We'll talk about that later. Uh, and then you click finish. And then what you've got is the basic bare bones of a class. Um, classes always start with a capital letter. Um, other things like um, method names or um, variables won't start with a capital letter. But your class is always going to start with a capital letter. And uh, let's see what we've got here. First of all, you see this uh, in kind of blue here that starts with the slash star star. This is a, a comment. So in other words, it's uh, text that doesn't get um, doesn't get run. So what I can do here is I can say this is my first challenge set and I can leave myself note that uh, 
uh, tell me about what a particular variable is or what a method does. For your projects, whenever you create a method, I'm going to want you to give me a quick overview of what the method does. So down here we have um, the main method. What does it do? Well, basically every Java program has to have a main method. Um, all you really want to do in your main method is to call the constructor, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, here's the main method. We've got public, static, void, main, and then in parentheses, string, bracket, args. Public means it's accessible anywhere. Static means there's only one of them. Void means that it's not going to return a value after it's run. And main is the name of the method. Uh, you guys who took Python last year, a method is basically a function. Uh, it's like a little self-contained program inside of a class. Um, then you have slash slash. This is the way you do a one-line comment. If you want to do a multi-line comment, you can use this Gary can stuff. But if you want to use a single line comment, um, you would go with just a slash slash. So what do we have to do here? You'll, you'll notice that, first of all, we've got a class definition up here, public class challenge set one. This defines the class. And everything inside of the parentheses um, is part of the class. Then you have the main method. And everything inside of this set of parentheses is part of the main method. You'll notice that. Uh, the main method is indented um, inside of the public, inside of the class. And if you were to put something, you know, like an if statement or something like that, you would indent that as well. We'll talk about that later. But basically, make sure that um, as you create stuff inside of stuff, you are indenting. So the first thing you'll need to do is you will need to um, create a constructor. Now, what the constructor does is um, it's used to initialize fields. What's a field? Well, it's a variable that can be accessed by the entire class. So if you have a, some particular variable, like, say, minutes, that several different methods are going to need to be able to use, then you would put that in your constructor so that those methods could use it. Um, when I said earlier that... Uh, the variable is initialized. What that means is when you start, when you create your object, uh, when you start your program, um, you are going to have these variables and they need to, they, they need to have some value when the uh, program starts. Now, um, by default, the value is zero if it's a number or null, which means empty if, um, if it's not a number. So like a string, for instance, would be null if you don't specify a value. But let's say you wanted to create, a, have a program that creates a square, um, and you don't want to have to have the user type in how big the, the length of the side should be on a square, then you would initialize the variable and say, uh, when the object is created, I'm sorry, this is a pain in the butt. Yeah. Uh, you would tell the computer, OK, just initialize it. Um, create the square with the size of five. So um, a constructor can initialize your global variables, your fields. Um, and sometimes you'll want to do that, or sometimes you just want to have the default. I think it's always good to initialize your variables, your fields, even if the, the number is going to be zero, just so that you see, OK, these are the variables I'm going to be using in my program right up at the top. It's a little bit easier to track. So let's create a constructor then. Um, hold on one second. So we're going to create a constructor. Now the constructor has to have the name of the uh, class. So because the class is called challenge set one, um, that means my constructor also needs to be named challenge set one. So we are going to say public challenge set one, and we uh, put um, parentheses after it. Now, in these parentheses, you can put parameters. What parameters are, are um, they're values that can be inserted, uh, can be used when you start running a method, uh, you know, used from somewhere else. So let's say you have some other class that is calling your method, and it says, like, okay, I want my square to be five big when you call that class. 
you would have to have some, you know, say like int eyes or something like that. And that way, when the um, when the other class says start challenge set one with the number five, it knows okay, I am going to take the number five and use that for the size variable and create a square of size five. But anyway. Right now, we're not going to take any parameters, so you don't have to worry about that. Public challenge set one with these two parentheses, and then I have uh, a curly brace, and it automatically put another curly brace to close it down there for me, which is convenient. I said that I can put um, a field in here if I want to. So, for instance, um, you know, I could say minutes. But unlike with Python, with Java, you have to declare your variables. In other words, you have to say what kind of variable it is. So I can't just put minutes equals zero. Uh, I have to say int minutes equals zero. In other words, this is the minutes variable and it's an integer. Uh, I know I mentioned variables a couple times. For those of you that don't know what a variable is, it's basically a container that can hold a particular type of data. Uh, I will talk a little bit about what the types of data that you can um, use R, but for the time being, just understand that it's like a box that can hold a value. So, for instance, you might want it to temporarily hold the number five, uh, and then you might want to use that variable and multiply it by some other number. Um, I guess we will we'll talk about it 